Well, today we're going to make challah, and of course challah is the traditional bread of the Jewish people for Shabbat and holidays. Very simple to make. I'm making what I call my classic recipe. It does have eggs in it. Some challah does not. So we're going to learn an easy way of making enough loaves to get through two of the main meals. Um, that four loaves. You can also cut this recipe down into six smaller loaves. I would guess each loaf would feed about six to eight people, depending on if you cut what we call challah steaks, big chunks, because that's what we like. So in this bowl, we have our 12 cups of flour. And to that, we are going to add three quarters of a cup of sugar, sprinkle it in. I like to sprinkle all my dry ingredients on top in separate little piles because if I get interrupted, I know what has gone into the bowl already. So this is one and a half tablespoons of salt and the equivalent of four packages of yeast. I prefer the rapid rise yeast mostly because I don't have all day to be doing this. And we're going to stir all the ingredients around to get the yeast mixed in. We don't want to have any lumps anywhere when we are starting to mix in the liquid ingredients. We have six eggs, and of course we're going to check those for blood spots before we add them. I have one cup of oil. I use canola oil. And the last secret ingredient is two tablespoons of real vanilla extract. Totally optional. And three and a half cups of water. Just pour that right in. So we're gonna stir those wet ingredients in. It's going to be sticky and we can add more flour as we need it, but I wanna get it mixed in. It's going to be very soft. It's gonna be messy, but that's okay. We're gonna add more flour on the table when we start to knead it in. We don't want to get too much of a hard dough. We want challah to be a little on the softer side. So off to the side here, we have a couple more cups of flour. We're going to just add part of it. And this is where we start to get our hands into the dough. And I'm just mixing it around and around until it starts pulling away. Get all those eggs in there and shake a little more flour. We'll be turning this onto the countertop here in a second to get the, the kneading going. So I do want to get my wet ingredients mixed in. And this should make about four loaves of challah. And if you serve, you know, two at every meal, that'll feed eight to 12 people. Just set that aside, sprinkle the counter liberally with flour. I love these little inexpensive dough scrapers. Just scrape that right out, sprinkle flour all over the counter, a little on the dough, and then just start kneading it. We don't want the dough to be too stiff. We do want a soft dough for challah. So add flour, do the quarter turn, and just keep kneading it. Now technically you would want to knead it for about 10 minutes. You could do less, you could do more, but you want to get the dough nice and smooth. I'm not going to add any more flour to this. If you have a bread machine, I'm not sure how much it'll hold. This is probably about six pounds of dough. So you can scale the recipe back to fit your bread machine. Now I'm going to go rinse off my fingers so I can make a nice oil bowl to put the dough into. This is nice and kneaded, smooth. You can almost see the little air bubbles forming. I don't have much flour left on the, on the surface and it's just rolling right back. I can even see the air bubbles starting to form on there. Perfect. It's ready to go into the bowl. I'm going to put, drizzle a little bit of oil into my bowl and I'm just going to pick this guy up top side down and I'm going to give it a good push in and I'm going to use it to smear that oil around. And then I'm just going to flip that up 
There you go. And we're going to cover it with a tea towel on the counter. If you're more in a rush, maybe put it in the oven that has the pilot light going or, the, or the, even just the viewing light on. So that'll generate a little bit of heat to get the rice going. Um, but otherwise, bread really benefits from just sitting there um, until it's double in bulk, which means it'll pretty much come to the top of that bowl. So we're going to set that aside. All right, let's see how our bread dough's doing. Ah, perfect. Okay, it's nice and smooth. Two fingers punched in. It's staying indent indented, at least for the next few minutes. So I'm going to just give it a nice little punch. See all the air bubbles coming up? Punch it down. Feels beautiful. You want hollow dough to be soft. Not real hard so that you you need to be able to make these strands and and they need to be pliable. If the dough is too stiff and hard, they just they don't want to cooperate. They don't want to bend and make the nice loops. So we're gonna just go ahead, empty that out. And you can see the oil from the bowl just left the sheen. Feels a little bit oily. Just sprinkle a little bit of flour on the surface. Let's give it a few kneads. Did you know that there are better days for making bread? Summertime, August, when it's nice and hot. You just get up and go, wow, this is a good day for making bread. Smells great, nice and yeasty. Smells like Shabbos is coming. Okay, giant ball. Much too much dough for one loaf of bread. This would really make four. But today, we're just going to set it aside, and we're going to do great braids, better than the store. Okay? You'll love it.